You're standing in Best Buy, staring at two gorgeous TVs on sale, and both boxes are covered in letters that look almost identical. Ever wonder why two completely different technologies ended up with names that sound like a typo? Today I'll explain OLED versus QLED like you're five years old. By the end, you'll know exactly which screen belongs in your home and why the brightest TV in the store often becomes the biggest disappointment at home. Here's what you need to understand first. OLED pixels create their own light. Each tiny dot on the screen turns on and off independently. When a pixel needs to show black, it just shuts off completely. Perfect darkness. QLED works with a backlight behind the screen that stays on even when parts of the image should be black. The screen tries to block the light, but some always leaks through. That's the fundamental difference, and everything else flows from that one fact. Now imagine you're watching a movie in a dark room, the kind with lots of shadows, space scenes, or moody lighting. OLED dominates here because those blacks are actually black, not dark gray, pitch black. The contrast becomes infinite because you're comparing pure darkness against bright colors. Your eye notices this immediately. Highlights pop, colors feel richer. The image gains depth that's almost three-dimensional. This is why film enthusiasts obsess over OLED. For darkroom viewing, nothing else comes close. But here's where it gets tricky. Walk into that same Best Buy and stand under those bright fluorescent lights. Suddenly, QLED looks just as good, sometimes better. That backlight can pump out way more brightness than OLED. We're talking 2,000 nits versus maybe 800 on OLED. In a bright showroom, that extra punch makes QLED look more vibrant and eye-catching. Salespeople know this. The TV that wins in the store might lose badly in your actual living room. So here's what matters for your life. If you watch TV during the day with windows open and sunlight streaming in, QLED handles that better. The extra brightness cuts through glare. If you're a night owl who dims the lights for movies, OLED delivers an experience that feels like a private theater. The technology literally disappears into the content. Most people fall somewhere in between, which is exactly why this decision gets confusing. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. OLED pixels wear out over time because they're organic materials that degrade when used. If you leave the same image on screen for hours every day, those pixels dim permanently. A news ticker, a video game HUD with health bars, a Windows taskbar during work from home marathons, you'll see a ghost image burned into the panel forever. QLED doesn't have this problem because the backlight doesn't care what image you're showing. Here's what this means for gamers specifically. Play Call of Duty for six hours with that minimap in the corner. That bright UI element stays in the same spot, hitting the same pixels repeatedly. Over months, those pixels wear faster than surrounding areas. You'll notice a faint outline even when the game is off. This isn't theoretical. It happens to people who ignore it. QLED lets you game without thinking about screen babysitting. Most normal TV watchers who switch between shows and movies never see burn-in. But if your viewing habits involve repetitive static elements, factor that into your budget. Here's what salespeople won't tell you. QLED is Samsung's answer to OLED, but it's not actually a new technology. It's LCD with a quantum dot layer that makes colors more accurate. Samsung branded it QLED to sound like OLED because they don't make OLED TVs in large sizes. That Q stands for quantum dot, not some breakthrough innovation. It's marketing genius. People see OLED and QLED next to each other and assume they're competing next generation technologies. OLED is genuinely different. QLED is an improvement on what's existed for decades. Both can look amazing, but understanding what you're actually buying changes how you evaluate price. And speaking of price, this is where shoppers get stuck. OLED used to cost twice as much as QLED. That gap has shrunk dramatically. You can find 55-inch OLEDs for around $1,000 now, sometimes less during sales. But QLED still wins on value per inch, especially in larger sizes. A 75-inch QLED might cost $1,200, while the OLED equivalent runs $2,500. That's a massive difference for families who want a big screen for sports and casual. Now check this out. Motion handling reveals fundamental differences in how these panels work. OLED has near instant response times because pixels just switch on and off. No lag, no blur, no ghosting during fast action. This makes OLED incredible for gaming and sports. QLED has improved dramatically, but liquid crystals still need milliseconds to physically rotate and block light. Your eye catches that blur during a basketball game or car chase. Competitive gamers notice this immediately. 
Casual viewers might not care at all. Here's the part that affects your decision more than specs. QLED brightness stays consistent for years because the backlight is just LEDs that don't degrade much. OLD dims slightly over time as those organic pixels wear out. After five years of heavy use, your OLED might have lost 10 or 15% of its peak brightness. Not enough to ruin it, but noticeable if you're sensitive to that stuff. QLED keeps pumping out the same brightness it had on day one. This matters if you're the kind of person who keeps TVs for a decade. Color accuracy is where things get interesting. Quantum dots give QLED incredibly wide color range, especially in bright scenes. OLED has perfect color accuracy in dark and mid-tones, but can't hit the same peak brightness in colorful highlights. So a sunset in a nature documentary might look more dazzling on QLED. A moody drama looks more cinematic on OLED. Neither is wrong. They're optimized for different content. If you watch a lot of HDR nature docs and animated movies, QLED's color pop is addictive. If you binge prestige dramas and horror films, OLED's contrast makes every frame feel intentional. The gaming conversation has shifted recently. Both technologies now support 120Hz refresh rates, variable refresh rate, and all the features next-gen consoles need. OLED still has the edge with response time and black levels for dark games. But QLED's brightness helps in competitive shooters where you need to spot enemies in bright outdoor maps. And because there's no burn-in risk, you can leave a game paused overnight without worry. The truth is, both are excellent now. Your room lighting and game types matter more than the panel technology. Here's the thing most buyers overlook. Sit directly in front of either TV, and they both look great but move to the side, and QLED's image degrades fast. Colors shift, contrast drops, brightness falls off. OLED looks identical from almost any angle because each pixel emits its own light. This matters more than you think. If you have a wide living room where people sit off to the sides, OLED keeps everyone happy. QLED works best when viewers sit in the center sweet spot. Families with big sectional couches notice this immediately during movie night. Let me give you one more real-world scenario that clarifies everything. You're a parent with kids who watch the same YouTube channels constantly. Bright, colorful thumbnails paused on screen while they grab snacks. Static logos in the corner of Fortnite streams running for hours. That's an OLED nightmare waiting to happen. QLED handles that abuse without flinching. Now flip the scenario. You're a movie buff who watches films after the kids sleep. Lights off, volume up, full immersion. OLED transforms that experience into something QLED simply cannot match. Same house, different use cases, completely different answers. Here's your decision framework. OLED delivers perfect blacks, infinite contrast, better motion, and wider viewing angles. It costs more in large sizes, risks burn-in with static content, and dims slightly over years. QLED delivers higher brightness, better daytime performance, zero burn-in risk, and lower cost per inch. It can't match OLED's black levels, has narrower viewing angles, and shows slight motion blur. Both excel at gaming now with the right features enabled. Think about your actual room. Where are the windows? When do you watch TV? Do you leave the same content on for hours? Are vapors spread across a wide seating area? Those questions matter more than specs on a box. So here's what I want to know. When you picture your perfect TV watching experience, are you sitting in a dark room absorbed in a movie? Or are you watching football on Sunday afternoon with sunlight streaming through the windows? Because your honest answer to that question is worth more than any specification sheet.